Hallelujah. You may be seated. Many you, you guys sound so good. You sound so good. And I love being your pastor. Love being your pastor. And I just want to say thank you all for being here. And I had a pastor tell me one day, he said, why do you thank people for coming to church? And I said, well, I'm glad to see them. He said, they're supposed to be at church. And so, man, again, I, 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 from the bottom of my heart, I, just, I appreciate you being here. I want to thank God for our Facebook family. We're reaching thousands. We may not be able to see them here, but watch this. One day we'll see them up there. That's good. Amen. That's good. And our church app and YouTube and all the beautiful people at Taylor County Detention Center. Right now we're down at Taylor County Detention Center on a big old screen. And so we love, we love them. How many, how many we love, we love them? Amen. Let's just tell them we love them. Amen. Amen. Glad to be here today. How many glad to be alive? God woke you up. Stood you up. Prayed you up. Put you up in church today. Man, good. Thank y'all. Amen. So what I'm getting ready to do today. Um, how many of y'all have ever had a burden? How many of you know burdens are okay? Burdens are okay. Now, worry's not, but burdens are. But um, I, I just want to give you what God's been downloading in my heart. And so this may be more of a teaching, preaching. I don't know. We're going to let Holy Ghost be Holy Ghost. But what I'm getting ready to release over you, I really, 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 really need you to listen. I need you to pay attention. Because some of you, listen to me, I can look at you and you're far from God right now. You're far from God right now. You can be, how many of you know you can be at church and still be lost? How many of you know you can be in leadership and still be lost? How many of you know you can teach Sunday school and still be lost? So listen, I, I want to talk to you today. I want to start a series today. And I, one of the biggest questions that I get asked in my life, people ask me all the time, what's the number one question you get asked a lot? Here's, here's one of the top five. Can God use me? Can God use me? So I want to start a series today called the God Can Series. The God Can Series. Because we got a lot of people that are divorced. But I want you to lean in. I don't care what anybody has ever told you in your life. You can be a murderer. Y'all ready for preaching or are you ready for vacation Bible school? You, you can be a murderer. You can be an adulteress. And listen, I don't make light of that. It is sin. It is wrong. It would disconnect you. But that does not opt out your gifting and your calling. Because God said that gifts and callings, Romans chapter 11, verse 29, are without. It's irrevocable. Watch this. You can't do nothing about it. You might as well surrender. And so, man, here, I just want to bust some lies up in the churches today. I want to. Buy, I am a divorced man, but watch this. That did not stop God. Now I know that makes people uneasy. Makes people uneasy. Well, I ain't listening to him now. I ain't talking to you then. I, I'm talking to people that believe in grace. That believe in mercy. That believe that God will take a mess, Hallelujah, and make it a message in your life. I need some people that have been redeemed by the blood of God that will say, God, I thank you for using me. Thank you for using me, God. Thank you for using me, God. Woo, I feel the Holy Ghost today. Hallelujah. Can God use you? I'm going to read some crazy scripture. Because when God gave me this, I said, they're going, God, you hear me talk about a donkey? Now, I'm not calling y'all donkey. But... Check this out, man. This is so powerful. This is so the, the God Can series. Matthew chapter 21. I'm going to read nine verses. And man, this is going to change y'all. This is going to change all of us, starting with me. I read this, and God gave me revelation. And today, I want to give it to you. And this is going to help us. Matthew chapter 21, verse 1 through 9. I'm reading out the NIV today. The Bible says, Matthew 21, verse 1 through 9. As they approached Jerusalem, they came to Bethage on the Mount of Olives. Listen to this. Jesus sent two disciples. Everybody say two disciples. Here's what he said to them. Go, listen to what Jesus said to the disciples. Go to the village ahead of you. Oh, Lord. And at once you will find a donkey tied there. This is so good. With her coat by her. Untie them and bring them to me. And if anyone says 
anything to you, say that. Listen to this, it's so powerful. The Lord needs them. Don't miss that. The Lord needs them. The Lord needs them. And he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what the spoken through the prophet. This is Old Testament. Say to the daughter of Zion. See that the king comes to you. Woo. Gentle. And riding on a donkey. And on a coat. The foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them to do. They brought the donkey and the coat and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the ground, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of them and those that follow, they shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna, the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest heaven. Somebody say, thank you for the reading of the word. Thank you for the reading of the word. Thank you for the, I love this. I've never seen this before in scripture, so I'm excited to give it to you. I love this because the Bible plainly says, plainly says, bring me a donkey. Bring me a donkey. And if anybody says anything to you, watch, the Bible says you tell them that the Lord needs the donkey. See, this is very interesting because watch this, you bunch of scholars. Nowhere else in Scripture, nowhere else in Scripture can you find where it says Jesus needs anything. Old Testament, he didn't need anything. He's God. How many of you know he's sovereign? How many of you know he's omnipotent? He's omniscient. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere at all times. We say that in our head. But all of a sudden, New Testament, God says, I need something. I need something. I need them. See, we think because we come to church. We think because we come to church that God needs our attendance and our participation. We think that God needs our worship. You were created to worship. But watch this. God don't need that. Watch this. Come on now. And if truth be told, if truth be told, we're the ones that need worship. We're the ones that need to raise our hand toward God and toward heaven and say, God, it's all about you. What you started, that you're going to finish. How many of y'all can testify that you need a Savior this morning? How many of y'all can testify this morning? You've got a Savior this morning. But here all of a sudden, God says these words is crazy. God, I'm missing I'm sovereign. He says, bring me a donkey. Bring, I need a donkey. I love this. I need that donkey. He didn't say I need a big old stallion. He, did, he didn't say these words, I need a big old Clydesdale. I love a Clydesdale. Feet all big, I'm talking. He didn't say I need a Tennessee walker. Come on, somebody. He said these words, no, I need a donkey. And listen, this is so powerful because I want to give this to you. I want to teach this a little bit. This was the last week before Jesus Christ died. This was the last week before Jesus Christ went to the cross and he died. And he chose a donkey to come riding in onto, into Jerusalem. And one of Jesus' most critical moments of his life, he didn't say, bring me a stallion, bring me a Clydesdale, bring me a Tennessee walker. He said, no, I need a donkey. Why did Jesus Christ choose a donkey? Why did Jesus, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the great I am, Jehovah Jireh, why did he choose a donkey? See, you know why? Here's why. When I start studying this out, donkey, donkey means burden barrier. Everybody say burden barrier. Y'all stay with me. Burden barrier. Burden barrier. Yeah. See, the church, <laughs> the church wasn't built by stallions. No, the church was, was built by people willing to carry a burden. I'm preaching better than y'all acting. It's okay, though. Great families. Great leaders, great leadership, great pastors. They're not show horses. They're just people who are willing to carry a burden. Willing to carry a burden. Somebody, watch this, somebody has to carry the burden of worship. Somebody has to carry the burden 
for, for praise and worship and leadership of a church. If y'all think for one moment it is the easiest job or easiest calling in the world to be a leader, to be a pastor, to be a mama, to be a daddy, when you got messed up people all around you, it's a burden sometimes. But somebody got to carry the burden. Listen, I, I'm, I'm going to give y'all some advice. If you're unwilling to carry a burden, you'll never serve God fully. You'll, you'll never, never. We serve a sissy generation. Sissy generation. Get your feelings hurt. You back off, you back down, you get out. Watch this. Here's what I have found out. If you, if you don't want to get your feelings hurt, <laughs> don't become a Christian. Listen, I'm being honest with you. How many parents we got here? How many of y'all have ever carried a burden? Welcome to parenthood. Yeah. How many leaders do we have in the house? Leaders, leaders. Why ain't all y'all's hands up? That'd tell you a lot about the church right there. No, I know, I know, I know who my deacon is. No, you don't. Who, listen, I'm telling you, all of us. Have a calling upon our life. Somebody has to carry the burden of prayer. Somebody's got to be willing to get on their knees. And have a burden for the church and people. Somebody's got to carry a burden for lost people. I am burdened. I am, I'm telling you, my, I'm, I, am, I was built. God created me for two things. To preach the word of God. And to reveal truth. And to lead people to Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm here today. Listen, you, if you hang around me long. You're going to have a hard time going to hell. Because I'm burdened for y'all. I do not believe by one moment that everybody in here today is saved and know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I'm going to preach today like every one of you is lost and dying. I don't, I'm not naive. I know that. How many burden barriers do we have in this house today? And I want to give you some, one, just one lesson. I had, listen, it's crazy. I had five. Yeah. <laughs> listen, wine gets good with age. I had five points, and God only is going to allow me to give you one today. So you come back next week, you'll get maybe two more. Third week, maybe another one. And maybe by Easter, we'll, have, we'll celebrate a resurrection. Amen. So here's what I want to give you some lessons we can learn from a donkey. Turn to your, turn to your neighbor and say, you remind me of a donkey. <laughs> Listen, y'all's my, I know, I thought, oh God. It's so true though. Here's some lessons. Y'all, y'all be quiet. I, I'm trying to preach good today. I want this to become real to y'all. You see, Brian, <laughs> Y'all be quiet, I'm telling you. It's got to become real. It's got to become real. Because when I look at this donkey, i never seen this before, but God gave me revelation. When I see this donkey, I see the kinds of people that God can use. Jesus Christ, Messiah, came riding into Jerusalem his last week before he died on a donkey. Not a stallion. Not a Clydesdale, not a Tennessee Walker. Why did Jesus ride on the back of a donkey? Why? Why? So here's what we're going to do. The kind of people God can choose and use is found in the life of a donkey. <laughs> Lessons we can learn from a donkey. How many of y'all ready to learn just, just one lesson today? Just one. Please, y'all, come on, give God praise. And if you're, some of y'all have, hey, don't know. <laughs> Lessons we can learn from a donkey. What qualifies you to be used by God? I get this question all the time. All the time. Can God use me? Yes. Yes, God can use you. So what qualifies you to be used by God? Number one, great blessings come from great burdens. Great blessings come from great burdens. Jesus Christ, how many of y'all can testify, was the greatest blessing that the world has ever seen, experienced, or will ever see or experience. He was the greatest blessing to humanity. I'm going to make you think. But it came from the greatest burden. It came from the greatest burden. 
See, you cannot separate blessings from burdens. Y'all hear me? Lean in. You cannot separate blessings from burdens. See, all we care about is blessings and blessings and blessings and blessings. Well, we write books about the blessed life, the blessed life. And I believe that. We are, how many of y'all know we are blessed? But it costs us a burden. It's going to cost, watch Elkhorn. It costs us to have 925 seats up in a sanctuary. Yeah, it sure did. 1.8. I ain't talking to you. It cost us. It cost us. It's going to cost us for lost people to walk down that aisle. It's going to cost us to fill that baptistry up. It's going to be a burden on our life. It's going to cost you something. It's going to cost you when you get filled with the Holy Ghost. It's going to cost you. It's going to be a burden. I love Jesus. I love Jesus so much. He taught me so much through this lesson. If you're unwilling to carry a burden, you'll never receive a blessing. Somebody needs to write a book called The Burden Life. The Burden Life. Because the greatest blessings in life come from the greatest burdens in life. Listen, the weight of Jesus on that donkey became the greatest blessing in life. Some of you are carrying some burdens. Well, listen to me. I'm trying to help y'all. Some of you are, you got weight on you. You got weight on you. You got weight on you. But I'm telling you in Jesus Christ's name. In Jesus Christ's name. The greatest blessings come from the greatest burdens. It's hard. You know, one of the hardest things I do in my life is, is the pastor. It's the pastor. One of my uh, friends, Dr. Patrick Key, is a missionary over in Kenya, Africa. And he said these words. He said, if God would have told me what I was getting ready to enter into, I probably wouldn't have went. Y'all hear me? Because see, there's witchcraft over in Africa. And there's witchcraft in Camelsville. We just don't talk about it in churches because it makes people uncomfortable. Today, you're going to get uncomfortable. Here's what I'm telling y'all. Listen to me. It's a burden sometimes carrying Jesus. I know y'all have never heard that before. Well, I'm blessed. We are blessed. But watch this, guys. It is a burden sometimes carrying that cross. That cross gets heavy. People making fun of you. Man, laughing at you. It's a burden sometimes. But I'm telling y'all in Jesus Christ's name, some of my greatest blessings in life come from the hardest things I had to carry in my life. It's a burden sometimes. Well, I just won't be able to go, go to the movies. I remember one time my son said, I'm going to go to the movies. And I said, what's playing? He told me. So I got on this uh, thing on, on email, or not email, but a website. And it tell, told you how many cuss words was in the movie. How many sex scenes were, y'all okay? How many sex scenes was up in the movie? How many times they used God's name in vain? How many times, all, all this stuff. And I, I made Blake sit down. And I said, you read this and you tell me, you want me to bless what you want to go see? I said, you're not going. What the, I'm the only one, I'm my friends and not going to get to go. I don't care about your friends. I care about your soul. I care about what's going inside of you. I care about, because watch, everybody here today, you're carrying some kind of spirit on your life right now. Woo! Preach that, preacher! I'm just telling y'all. See, we think it's, if somebody's carrying a burden, we think they got a sin. God says, oh, no, 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 no. I could have chose a stallion. I, I could have chose a Clydesdale. I could have chose a Tennessee walker, but here's it. I chose a donkey because donkey means burden carrier. You're going to have to carry something in your life if you ever want the blessings in your life. It's not easy following God. How many of y'all can testify? If you think it's easy, it's because you're not doing anything. You start giving hell, hell. You start coming against the principalities of darkness. You watch, 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 watch. You start preaching Bible in churches. You start talking about the Holy Ghost and prophecy and tongues. It's going to be a burden. Because you know why? Even religious people, church people, will fight over the gifts and the callings. But I'm telling you today, in Jesus Christ's name, it's time for the whole canon of the Bible to be proclaimed and to be preached about in local churches today. If we're going to make a difference in South Central, you've got to believe in all the Bible. Quit picking and choosing what fits your life. 
Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a burden sometimes. I'm burdened for y'all. I'm burdened this morning for my children. I'm burdened that people watch are lost and dying and going to hell. Every 60 seconds, three people die. Does that bother y'all? Are you burdened by that? Are you just burdened when sin's up in your life and things are not going good and everybody else knows what's going on? It burdens me that churches are empty. It burdens me that we're called the Bible Belt and we ain't even got the belt of truth on. It bothers me that over 10,000 churches have closed their doors in one year. Ten, over 10,000 churches have closed their doors in over a year. That burdens me. That bothers me. How about you? But they say on average, the average pastor only prays 15 minutes a day. And so the way I look at that is breakfast, lunch, and supper. When's the last time you was burdened for lost people? Come on. When's the last time you had your children at this altar and you were so stinking burdened for them that you said, God, I'm going to stay here till I feel a spirit leave their life. I'm going to do whatever it takes to make a difference. You've got to be burdened. And I can see people today. Lord, even here, you'll give an altar call and people will get up and leave. You'll serve Holy Communion and people will leave. We're not burdened. No, we're not. Well, come on. We're not burdened. Because you know, if, if we were burdened, we would do something about it. Daddies, you better be daddies. Yeah, you better buckle up and buckle in. Because listen, I believe we're living in the last days. And things are getting ready to take place in churches that people have never seen. And some people are going to look at that spirit and call it confusion. And they're going to look at that spirit and they're going to say, well, that spirit ain't right. But I'm telling you, if the Bible's correct, Beth, like I believe it is, we will see blinded. We'll see blinded eyes come back open. Come on, somebody. you got to be burdened for that. It's more than us just showing up and sitting down. I don't like that song. and It's too dark in here. Watch this. I'm burdened that people, somebody might be sitting beside you, lost and undone, and going to burn in hell, and you're going to fight and fuss over a stinking light bulb? I don't like you. It's okay. I'm struggling right now with myself, too. Here's what I know. Somebody in this church right now is lost. Undone. Can they look at your life and you are burdened so much to worship God when they look at you and they say, I want that? Or does people look at your life and say, If that's a Christian, I don't want that? You know what's wrong with the world today? We want the stallions, and God chose a donkey. Everybody wants the big churches, but they don't want to pay the cost. You know what the Bible says? You better, listen, I love this, Willie, because the Bible's so good. He says, you better count the cost before you buy the field. You better count the cost before you say, God, come into my heart. Save my soul. Redeem my spirit. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. You better count the cost. Some of you got off the donkey. You say, Brian, are you, are you upset? No, I'm burdened. See, if you're burdened, it'll make you preach. I feel, a, I feel a burr under my saddle this morning. Because the church, I'm telling you, you know why I almost quit church? Praise team, you guys come. You know why I almost quit church? Because all I seen at church was fussing, fighting, arguing. They'd never reach down and pull people out of the ditch. They was good at nailing people to the cross, but they was horrible about resurrecting them. How many of y'all know we're all a mess in here today? We all, are, we all need Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. But I'm praying today that we'll get a burden. Burden. Burden for lost people. Why did God not choose a, a stallion? Why did he choose a donkey? Because donkey means burden barrier. God says, I'm getting ready 
Y'all think about this. I'm getting ready to go to the cross. And I chose a donkey to teach me and you <laughs> that life's not going to work out the way that you think it will all the time. It's a burden. It's a burden. It's a burden. It's a burden barrier. It's a burden carrier. And God says, if you want a blessing, you better learn how to carry a burden. That's the number one lesson. As a Christian, I'm going I'm to educate you. Just for, if you say, I am a child of God, you better watch out because you changed ownership. And when you changed ownership, you changed ownership. You know why some of you may not have a problem right now? Because you're working for the devil. And if you're working for the devil in, a, in his world, you ain't, you ain't going to, yeah, there ain't going to be no difference in you. How's your attitude? How's your spirit? How's your life? You love that person looking back at you in the mirror? How's things going in you? Are you willing to carry a burden? You say, Brian, I'm ready for point number two. You ain't even got point number one down yet, so we're going to wait to get number one down. You got to be willing to carry a burden. You got to be willing to carry a burden. I want you to look at your neighbor really quick and say, well, I see you in heaven. Well, I see you in heaven. We have made church all about us. We've made life all about us. Our children don't even know how to fight in the spirit. It burdens me that families can't get along. It burdens me. That we call ourselves Christians and we are the most dysfunctional people that I've ever seen in my life. We don't know how to fight in the spirit. We know how to fight each other. We don't know how to love. You say, Brian, why are you teaching like this? Because God chose us to carry his burden. We're talking more about the stimulus package than we are the salvation package. We're talking about COVID-19 more than we're talking about 777. That's the best stimulus package you can ever get, by the way. You get the Holy Ghost, you get Jesus, you get God. He'll change your life. Money can't buy what God put in you. Money can't give you what God can give you. You can stack this building up from the top to the bottom with $100 bills. And what I got is not for sale. I need somebody in this place today that's been blood bought, born again. Have a burden on your life and give God praise in this place today. Come on, burden people. Come on, burden bearers. Give God a big burden praise. Hallelujah. You may not feel like it, but give him praise. Hallelujah. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Give him praise. Let me say this. Let me say this. Let me say this. Crazy, 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 crazy. Just stay, stay standing. We're done. You say, Brian, it's only 1055. I, well, I'm done preaching. Invitation. Here we go. I've seen more at the end than I have at the beginning. Listen. You know why it's hard for some of you to, to, to worship? Let me give you a reverse psychology. Let me, let me give you a reverse of this. It's a burden. Sometimes, I'm not going to lie. Can I, can I just be honest with my church? My flesh is sit down. My flesh has so much going on. I'm thinking about this and I'm thinking about that. And I got this going on in my life. And I had a bad week. And my mind's not where it needs to be. So when I walk in this house. My spirit's saying, praise him. My spirit is saying, give God praise, honor, and glory. But my flesh is setting down. But my spirit is standing up. Sometimes, maybe this will help y'all. We know to worship. How come we don't? Because sometimes it's a burden. Can I just be honest with y'all? It's just truth. Marriage is the same way. Watch me. Lean in here real quick while I reel you in. Marriage is the same way. Watch this. Raising children. <laughs> God, they can't write enough books about that. They're going to be burdens. Some of y'all need to look at your kids and say, you, he can preach it right. You're a dang burden today. <laughs> hey. 
Yeah. Marriage sometimes can be a burden. Church sometimes can be a burden. Schools can be a burden. Here's what I'm just saying. How many of y'all want the blessings? Come on. If you want to be blessed by God, you want the blessings in life, you better be willing to carry a burden. You better be watch. You better be willing to carry a burden. Why do people act the way they act? Because they're burdens. Why does my kids act the way they act? Because they're burdens. See, y'all never had a preacher stand in front of y'all tell y'all truth like that. Everybody, blessed life, blessed life, blessed life, blessed life. I'm just telling you, the most blessed man in the world, Jesus Christ, had all the cattle on a thousand hills and the gold under it. He raised the dead. He healed the blind. The lame could walk. But watch this. It cost him. You know what? The church is unwilling to pay the cost. It's so easy. It's so easy, praise team. Just play three songs. So easy. Routine, 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 routine. And all of a sudden the Holy Ghost shows up and we're sitting there going, where did that come from? He's wanting to do it right now. He's here right now. But could it be the reason why you're not moving is because you're carrying a burden? Hmm. So next week I get to tell you part two. Can God use you? Absolutely. But there's things, not only are you going to carry a burden to be blessed, but how many of you know my point number two is, I'm not going to get into this, but God can use the unqualified. God can use whoever He wants to use. I'm going to listen. We feel the Holy Ghost. We do not choose who God can use. Y'all hear me? Because God chooses murderers. God chooses prostitutes. God chooses ad- adulterers. He chooses divorced people. He used to ev- Oh, hallelujah. I ain't going to get into that. When we come back next week, you'll get that. But I end with this. Why did God choose, why did Jesus choose a donkey? As a matter of fact, I'm going to go deeper with this. There was a coat tied behind the donkey. This is so good. What was the coat? See, we read the Bible, we read the Bible, read the Bible, we don't study the Bible. We don't study the Bible. We don't study the Bible. You read the Bible till the Bible can read you. You read it, Brian, I don't understand the translation. Listen, get, get one that you can understand. Get a translation. Get the Bible that you can understand. And you read the Bible till the Bible can read you. Be willing, Elkhorn. In Jesus Christ's name, you can call it prophecy. You can call it whatever you want. I firmly believe, according to the Bible, that an outpouring, things are getting ready to happen in this church. In this church. In this church, hallelujah. In this church, hallelujah. We will see greater things. I'm telling y'all in Jesus Christ's name. Y'all can say what you want. And if you don't want it, you're at the wrong church. Because it is time. It is time. Here's why I almost quit the church. Because I read the Bible. And I would see totally the opposite of church. I would read the Bible and I would see totally opposite of church. I'd read where God just walked by people in Acts chapter 5 and his shadow would heal people. But then all of a sudden you come to church. I, do you believe that? I don't debate it no more. Yes, it's real. Yes, it's real. So, how many burden bearers do I have in here today? Come on. I can look at some of you. Some of you are, you're way down. You got a burden on you. And I'm telling you in Jesus Christ, stay on the donkey. Hallelujah. Stay on the donkey. Stay on the donkey. Stay on the donkey. And keep going. And God says, as you go, I will bless. As you go, I will bless. Y'all get the word today? Somebody give God praise. Amen. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I have people all the time come to my office and about marriage and homes, children. 
And for some odd reason, we think that we shouldn't be able to have to carry a burden. Sometimes I think God allows burdens in our life to see how much we truly care for people. I'm burdened this morning for my children. I'm burdened for every one of you. Every one of you. I'm burdened for you. I'm burdened for you. I'm burdened for you. I'm burdened for this world. Next four years is going to show you a lot about this world. I'm burdened for marriages. I'm burdened. But I know a burden barrier. I know somebody who still, who come riding in on a donkey. And I know somebody said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'm just delivering some good news today. It's okay. Listen to me. It's okay to be burdened. Not worried, but burdened. Love people so much that you're burdened by it. Right now, in this room, I'm, I'm just going to go with the Holy Ghost. We need to be burdened, Dale Corn. Some people say the churches will never, never be the same. And I say, good, praise God. Because you know what? What we were doing wasn't working. You said, Brian, we had 600 and some people. That don't impress me or God. None. All that does is impress people. So in Jesus Christ's name, y'all ready? Are you willing to carry a burden to receive the blessing? That's it, Allison. We try to get off the donkey. <laughs> God, we're like, God, I can't take it. God says, no, stay on the donkey. Stay, stay on the donkey. I'm tired of praying for my kids. Well, you should have thought about that before you had them. Listen, married people. Before you say I do, I'm trying to help y'all. Marriage is tough. Yeah, in-laws and outlaws and all the laws. It's tough. Sometimes I want to tuck my tail and I want to run. Now, I know y'all sanctified, glorified, and set aside and all that other stuff. Listen, b Ralph, I'm telling you, it's tough. It's tough being a pastor. It's tough being a father. It's tough being a husband. It's tough being a leader. It's tough. It's tough. It's tough. It's, tough. it's a burden sometimes. So, while well, y'all ready? I'm done. Stay on the donkey. Stay on the donkey. So, Father God, in Jesus Christ's name, I've done what you told me to do. Lord, I pray, God, that you give us ears to hear. Help us carry the burden. Hallelujah. Help us carry the burden. Help us carry the burden. And God, I'm so excited for next Sunday. I'm so excited for the Sunday after that. And Lord, April the 4th, we get to celebrate you. We get to see the burden come off. And so Lord, I praise you and thank you. God, bless these precious people. And may this altar be filled with your glory. I pray this prayer believing all things are possible. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.